tutor for there we go, uh, for Canada Super Spelling Bee. And so I will be giving uh, two webinars tonight. Uh, we're going to be starting today with our English writing webinar. Um, and that will last us around 30 minutes, maybe just short of 30 minutes. Um, and then we will move on to our Spelling Bee webinar. Uh, so English writing and Spelling Bee, these are two courses that I typically do teach um, with Canada Super Spelling Bee. Okay, um, so I am going to share my screen. Do, 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 do. Okay, so there we are. Get the slideshow all prepped. All right, uh, so today we are going to be starting with our English writing webinar. Um, so essentially what I'm going to do today is try and give you as much information as I can uh, generally about um, English writing with Canada Super Spelling Bee, right? We have a bunch of different levels. Um, additionally, we do have different topics that we, that we tend to teach. So um, for instance, I have taught, uh, I have taught courses uh, on English writing, of course. Um, I've taught courses on academic writing specifically and publishing. Um, I've also taught courses on creative writing. Um, so we do have a, a different sort of focuses and levels um, for English writing at Canada Super Spelling Bee. Um, but before I get into that, just very quickly, who am I? Uh, why am I here talking about this, right? Um, I'm Mr. McCoy, right? So I have like a few degrees. There we go. Um, they're really just, uh, they're really just like history degrees, right? So uh, my background tends to be primarily, obviously, in writing, but also in research and sort of critical thinking and stuff like this. Um, I do have teaching experience, right, from intermediate all the way to university level students. Um, and then, as I say, it's it's primarily been language and research based um, teaching. So, okay, we're going to start today by talking very briefly about why we should even be studying English grammar and writing. Like, why is that important for us? Why should we bother? Um, it's a good question, right? Why should we be doing this? Well, first of all, writing, uh, it's really important for us to convey our thoughts in just about like any field. Um, so, let's say uh, let's say a student wants to continue into the STEM field, for instance. Uh, maybe they're interested in chemistry or engineering or something like this. Um, in any case, no matter what, uh, no matter what the pursuit, no matter what uh, the field, um, you are going to need uh, precise critical writing skills. Right. Um, if you don't possess these precise critical writing skills, it's going to be very difficult for you um, to convey your your thoughts, your ideas, your arguments very specifically. Right. If we're talking about um, acu uh, academic argumentative uh, writing. Right. We need to be able to convey our thoughts very precisely. Um, and to do that, we need to have complex uh, writing style and, and grammatical precision. Um, just moving on there. Uh, writing obviously is a way that we can express ourselves. Um, so let's say you're more interested in the creative uh, aspect of writing, um, which a lot of people are, right? Uh, writing is a way that we can express ourselves. It's a creative outlet that we can use, right? Um, and part of being able to express ourselves in this way is being able to actually compose in the English language. Um, if we continue now, um, so obviously uh, learning uh, learning sort of like the exact grammar and the exact uh, stylistic choices of, uh, of the English language is going to help us with that expression. But finally, um, it is obviously going to help us not only with grammar and writing, but also in literacy. Um, so if we do sort of create a stronger foundation um, in our writing skills, we're going to be able to recognize that um, in 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 reading, right? So really having a strong uh, a strong writing skill is going to help us uh, with our literacy skills. So okay, uh, studying English grammar and writing. It's very important, at least in my opinion, right? Um, but it does help you no matter what field you're in. Um, that's that's sort of my takeaway here. It's not only for people who are looking to do better in English class, even though obviously you can use this um, to sort of improve uh, your performance in an English class, let's say. Um, but really, these skills are going to be transferable to just about any topic or any subject. 
Now, okay. Um, how, like, what are we going to focus on in these classes, which is obviously a good question to ask ourselves. Um, so we do have a few posters here that I think uh, really do a good job at highlighting um, sort of the main topics that do tend to present themselves in uh, the two major levels um, in our uh, in our courses. So I'm just trying to get my I'm just trying to get the uh, the the cameras out of the way so that I can see it perfectly. Um, that'll have to do. Um, in any case, uh, two of the levels I'll be talking about today is grades three to five and grades six to eight. Um, and so you're going to see that there is sort of a clear distinction between these two. Uh, I'll talk uh, very briefly later on about um, really figuring out what level your, uh, your learner, I'm going to call them, uh, should be uh, should be enrolled in, right? Because it's sort of a complicated question at times, you know, should I be in the grade six to eight level? Should I be in the three to five level? It's really not so much about age, more so that it's about um, skill level, right? And so we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but you are going to see here that the grades uh, three to five section is going to be more about establishing um, your sort of grammatical skill, right? Your literacy skill, your writing skills. Um, and so we can look at different things like grammar and clear sentences, right? So this is sort of the basic, uh, the foundations of uh, English composition, right? Um, we're talking about very simple things like coordinating conjunctives, right? Uh, conjunctions, rather. Uh, we can talk about sentence style and structure. We can talk about um, complete sentences versus fragment sentences, right? So what are those? We talk about um, independent and dependent clauses, right? Um, so we're really sort of uh, building a foundation to build from um, in this in this earlier grade. Uh, grammar and beautiful sentences, right? So here we're talking more about the style of composition, um, right? So can you can you write? Uh, essentially in a more advanced style. Um, so we can look at different things like uh, like commas and compounding, right? So where we mix up the different types of sentences, um, identifying obviously those types of sentences and really just joining those sentences together um, because this is the, the, the base of, uh, of style, right? This is, these are the building blocks. Um, now, in this earlier section, this, this grade three to five section, we also start to introduce paragraphs, right? So we don't get into complex paragraphs necessarily, but we do want to introduce the idea of paragraphs, um, right? So what uh, is the general um, structure that we're going to follow with paragraphs? Uh, how do we organize paragraphs? When are we going to uh, use paragraphs? Uh, or rather, when are we going to start new paragraphs, right? So when it, When is an appropriate time to start a new paragraph? Why do we even use paragraphs, right? So it's really that, that first step in understanding how to structure our writing. Um, and then uh, depending on the class level, we can sometimes get into argumentative uh, writing, right? So argumentative essays, um, where we start looking very basically at the idea of an argument and how to support that argument. Now, okay, uh, if we are to hop over now to uh, the more advanced writing classes, um, I do want to point out um, that the like obviously they're going to be building off of what we're seeing in the grade three to five section, um, but they are going to focus focus more rather on refining your writing. Um, and so you know we can talk about the organization of your writing, for instance. Uh, I mean, if we're talking about argumentative writing, this could be something like identifying thesis statements, um, using clear topic sentences, um, right? So these are these are very uh, very typical of traditional academic writing. Um, if you happen to be more interested in creative writing um, or uh, journalistic writing, right? We have other options available to us as well, right? Because these other types of writing, they also have to be organized in a way that makes logical sense to a reader. Um, so at this point, we can start getting into these more advanced topics um, in organizational writing. Um, developing and supporting arguments, right? So this is where, uh, combined with that next point, the persuasive strategies, uh, this is where we start to get into uh, more advanced argumentation. Um, and so when we do something like this, when we, when we approach, uh, I would say, like advanced academic writing, um, 
what we're really doing at this point is is sort of studying logic, right? Um, so what I tend to like to do with my classes is I will look at um, deductive logic, right? So this is sort of like the logic that underpins the essay, right? Why does the essay work the way that it does? Um, and so I find that once students really get a sense of uh, the logic that is underpinning the essay, um, it makes it easier for students um, to really approach the composition of that essay, right? Um, and so this is something that gets a little more advanced, right? It depends on the class, of course. Um, if the class is is ready for more advanced logical topics, um, we will we will certainly approach those, right? Um, because I think at this level, what we want to try and do is get away from something like the five paragraph essay, um, which doesn't necessarily prepare us for um, for strong arguments, um, but instead gives us a very simple sort of structure to follow, right? So what we want to do is we want to move away from that um, and towards some like a, a system that allows us to expand on our writing as as we um, as we sort of move forward in our educational journey, right? Um, you get to a point uh, naturally where you're writing longer and longer essays. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to establish early a system that's going to grow with you. Um, and so this is what I like to do with my classes is studying the logic of the essay, right? The logic of the argument, the logic of the persuasion. Okay. Um, of course, when we're looking more at persuasive strategies, we can talk more about uh, style in writing, right? Um, so we have here something like uh, the ethos and the pathos, even the logos of of the of the arguments, sometimes of the advertisements, right? If we're looking at journalistic writing, um, but we can talk about appeals to the reader, right? How will the reader um, essentially receive the information, right? Uh, Oftentimes, this is going to be uh, wrapped up in the idea of word choice, right? So we can we can talk about word choice. We can talk about formality levels in English writing. Um, we can also talk about very advanced um, composition, right? So you can see avoid double illogical and unclear uh, comparisons. Identify parallel structures in sentences or even paragraphs. Um, removing redundant words and phrases. So here we're getting into very advanced uh, composition strategies in in the English writing. Uh, moving on now, uh, polishing and avoiding plagiarism. Uh, right. Polishing is a big point here. Um, usually what I like to do is I like to try and carve out a little bit of time to examine the issue of editing. Um, right. Because I, I like to say that the majority of writing is editing, right? Um, a, a very big portion of, of the entire act of writing is going back and rewriting. It's going back and and literally polishing your work, right? Um, and so here we sort of, we, we can go over basic uh, grammatical points again if we, if we don't have that solid foundation. Um, we can also go over more advanced writing tips, right? Um, just to make sure that, uh, that students are able to correctly polish and edit their writing. Um, avoiding plagiarism is a big one as well. Uh, so we can talk very briefly um, or at length, depending on if there's interest, right? Um, because I do like to cater my classes to uh, student interest. Um, that we do talk about, uh, obviously, citation styles, uh, basic citation, and the idea of plagiarism, right? Because this is something that the further you move up in uh, the academy, in academia, um, it is going to become a larger and larger issue. Um, right. So uh, perhaps uh, someone who is in this grade level, uh, maybe grade five or grade six, uh, there are not going to be huge consequences for plagiarism right up front. Um, but as they go on, if this is sort of a habit that is um, not necessarily nurtured, but one that's not really called out, uh, this can be something that 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 does lead to issues uh, later on. Um, and so plagiarism is something that I do like to talk about with my classes, especially classes that are delving into academic writing um, because plagiarism is uh, it's really a very serious academic um, offense. 
right? And so we do talk about the different types of plagiarism, uh, how to spot plagiarism in your own writing, because sometimes it can be deceptively difficult uh, to spot plagiarism, right? Sometimes it can be a genuine accident. Um, and so a lot of it is sort of learning to recognize that. Okay, um, so those are sort of general outlines as to uh, what we might look at in these different classes. Um, very quickly now. Oh, yes. Uh, so I'll talk about materials. Uh, no, I'm going to look at how to choose a level first, and then I will come back to materials. Um, so, okay. Uh, we're looking at two levels here, grades three to five and grades six to eight. Um, how do we choose which level is right for the learner? Right. That's that's sort of the big question. Right. So three to five is a basic introduction to grammar like we just talked about. Um, so you could ask your learner uh, a few different questions. Or when I say ask your learner, what I mean is maybe like consider whether your learner um, qualifies for these questions or not. Um, but the questions are, are you comfortable with comma rules, right? So is punctuation something that you are comfortable with or not? Um, if you are not comfortable with comma rules, maybe the three to five is, is good for you because this is going to establish the basic punctuation rules. Um, are you comfortable with verb conjugations? So again, something that's not necessarily talked about a lot in English specifically, um, certainly not as much as, as, as a language like French, which a lot of learners in Ontario do learn. Um, but in English, we don't often talk about verb conjugations. Um, and so if the learner does have some difficulty with English verbs and conjugating those English verbs, uh, the three to five level might be for them. Um, are you comfortable with sentence structures, right? Uh, so we talked about how some of the some of the more basic sentence structures um, are topics that often come up in the three to five uh, section, right? Um, so are you familiar with the idea of a simple sentence, a compound sentence, or even a complex sentence? Uh, how to make those? How to identify those? Um, are you familiar with uh, dependent clauses and independent clauses? Um, if not, maybe the three to five level is for you. Um, are you comfortable with paragraph structures, right? So again, uh, that three to five level is looking at sort of the basics of paragraphs, right? So are you familiar with how a paragraph is structured? Are you familiar with when to, when to begin a new paragraph? What does a paragraph mean to writing? Um, so if you are not particularly comfortable with the basics of paragraphs, um, the three to five section may be for your learner. Okay, now what about for the uh, six to eight level, right? Um, obviously, it's going to be a little bit more advanced, right? This course is a deeper look into advanced composition. Um, and so we're looking at sort of refining our skills at this point, not developing them. Uh, because the three to five section really is there for developing a foundation, a grammatical uh, foundation in, in English writing, in English composition, whereas the six to eight is going to be about refining those skills. So you might ask yourself, you know, or ask your learner, are you familiar with writing tone, for instance, right? So here we're getting into stylistic choices, word choice, um, the sort of the use of those different types of sentence structures. Um, are you familiar with argumentation, right? Are you familiar with the with the logic behind it? Are you familiar with how to structure a thesis and the main arguments behind a thesis, um, right? So this is something that we do look at um, at this level. Are you familiar with literary devices, right? So again, we get into more advanced writing styles. Um, and so advanced writing styles often do include uh, literary devices, right? This is something that we do tend to look at um, in grade eight and into grade nine English curricula. And then finally, are you familiar with complex sentence structures, right? So we do have sort of a, an establishment of, of sentence structures in the three to five section, uh, but we do develop and refine that um, in the older section, in the six to eight section.
Okay, uh, I am going to go back now and look very quickly at the materials, right? Um, because I do want to touch on this very briefly. It's it, it's important to talk about, you know, like where are we getting all of this from and what materials can you use um, uh, alongside one of these courses? So I have three materials here that I find are... Uh, obviously very important for for my lesson composition um but are also very important for um you know they can be important for for self-learning and self-study as well um and i'll mention that at the end there uh but first i do want to go over the first two uh materials here which really are uh just influences on my lesson planning personally um so i tend to go back to uh grammar by diagram by C uh, by cindy vito and the elements of style by strunk and white uh you know these uh these are our textbooks that i that i have been studying uh in university uh and i have found that they're they're very credible um, and they also do give a very uh, solid foundation in English composition. Um, so these are sort of influencing the uh, the creation of content for these courses. Um, alongside these, however, I do recommend Anne Hoag's The Essentials of English, uh, rather The Essentials of English, a writer's handbook. Um, and I and I really recommend this as sort of like a study, uh, as study material for students, for learners um, alongside these courses, uh, right? So uh, maybe the other two might not be uh, particularly suited um, for, for learners of this level, um, but this third material, The Essentials of English, a writer's handbook, it certainly is, right? And it's going to give you a lot of, um, uh, essentially a lot of exercise material that you can practice on your own time, uh, although I do tend to give homework that's uh, that's independent of um, of this textbook. So it's certainly a uh, uh, typically a, uh, an optional um, uh, material that that students are certainly welcome to use. Um, you know, I mean, it's not going to hurt to use optional materials, to read optional materials. Um, and if you do want material to study from, I do recommend The Essentials of English by Anne Hoag. Okay, that leaves us just about five minutes left in this seminar. Uh, I did it. Nice. Um, are there any questions? Uh, from anyone about uh, anything I've talked about today, uh, anything about uh, the course, uh, the creation of the course, the teaching of the course, homework, um, sort of material that is covered, uh, anything like this. This is this is your time to take the floor and ask me anything, uh, anything that is still dwelling after uh, after this webinar. Hey. Uh, hi there. Um... Hello. Hello. So I was looking if if the grade levels that are uh, mentioned here would be suitable even for the younger grades, like let's say grade two, who are just developing the writing, you know, mm -hmm. the writing um, skills. Yeah. So so I uh, actually I'll, I'll keep on this slide here. Um, I do tend to teach on the on the older end, so I'm not. Uh, very well versed on on the on the younger grades um but i would say that um if uh if your child is um uh, somewhat familiar with some grammatical rules uh you could place them in the three to five uh just because the three to five really does work to uh, establish the sort of like a foundation in grammar so it doesn't presuppose any any knowledge um, and so teachers will usually what they'll do is they'll meet the learners where they are for these courses mm -hmm. um, we, us we usually have small enough classes that we can sort of focus on the level that that the students are at um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I would say that if um, if your if your child does have uh, like sort of some uh, uh, some grammar to build off of, uh, the three to five course could be could be good for them. OK, OK, that answers my question. Thank you. Perfect. Do we have any other questions for for today? <laughs> 